Good morning children. Today we are going on to the fourth chapter quadratic equations. Let us see. Here in this chapter we are going to learn about quadratic equation and the different methods for solving a quadratic equation. We have learned about quadratic polynomial in chapter 2. We equate this polynomial to 0 to get a quadratic equation. Generally, a quadratic polynomial is of the form ax square plus bx plus c were a not equal to 0. So, a quadratic equation in the variable x is an equation of the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 were a not equal to 0 and a b c are real numbers. An example of a quadratic equation is 2x square plus x minus 300 equal to 0. The value of x that satisfies an equation is called a solution or root of the equation. We have already learned about finding the zeros of the polynomial in class 9. So, here in general we can say a real number alpha is called a root of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. If a not equal to 0, then we can say a alpha square plus b alpha plus c will also be 0. From this we can say x equal to alpha is a solution or root of the quadratic equation or alpha satisfies the quadratic equation. Now let us check the given equations are quadratic equations or not. For this we simplify the given equation and check whether it is an equation of degree 2 or not. Let us see exercise 4.1 page number 73. Two questions are done for you and you have to do the remaining questions. First one, check whether the following are quadratic equations. x plus 1 whole square is equal to 2 into x minus 3. Here we need to simplify the given equations before deciding whether it is a quadratic equation or not. So the left side that is LHS we have to apply our identity a plus b whole square for x plus 1 whole square. And right side we can open the bracket with 2. So the question becomes x square plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 6. Transposing the right side we have 2x square plus 2x plus 1 minus 2x plus 6 equal to 0. Negative 2x and positive 2x gets cancelled and we have x square plus 7 equal to 0 which is of the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. Here the x coefficient is missing but it is not a problem. You just have to check whether the x square coefficient is there or not. When we move on to question number B, it is x plus 2 whole cube equal to 2x into x square minus 1. Again applying a plus b whole cube which is equal to a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube. We have the LHS as x cube plus 6x square plus 12x plus 8 equal to and the right side becomes 2x cubed minus 2x. Finally, the equation is negative x cubed plus 6x square plus 14x plus 8 equal to 0 which is not of the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. Therefore, we can say it is not a quadratic equation. Question number 2. Represent the following situations in the form of quadratic equations. We have already learned 
how to frame an expression from a statement. The same way we can frame quadratic equations. Question number one is, the area of the rectangular plot is 528 meters square. Length of the plot is one more than twice its breadth. We need to find length and breadth of the plot. Both length and breadth is not given, but length is given as one more than twice its breadth. So we assume breadth is equal to x. Therefore, length is equal to 2x plus 1 as it is given one more than twice its breadth. Also given, area of the plot is 528 meter square. The plot is rectangle in shape and area is equal to length into breadth. We can apply L into B is equal to 528. That is x into 2x plus 1 equal to 528. And we can frame the quadratic equation as 2x square plus x minus 528 equal to 0. Framing of quadratic equations is very important as we need to do our word problems. So let us move to question D and B and C is left for the students to do. A train travels a distance of 480 km at a uniform speed. If the speed has been 8 km per hour less, then it would have taken 3 hours more to cover the same distance. We need to find the speed of the train. Here, very clearly it is given the distance covered by the train is equal to 480 km. And the train is traveling with a uniform speed. So the speed is taken as a variable x. We have learned the formula time is equal to distance by speed which is equal to 480 by x. Now in the second sentence they have given a new condition that the speed is reduced and it is also given as 8 km per hour less. So the new speed becomes x minus 8. Automatically we know if the speed is reduced, the time taken will be more and it is given as 3 hours more to cover the same distance. So what will be the time as per the new condition? It is distance by speed which is equal to 480 by x minus 8. As per the data, train would have taken 3 hours more if the speed is reduced. We know the second condition, the speed is less and the time will be more. So we can find the difference between the two conditions. That is 480 divided by x minus 8 minus 480 by x which is equal to 3. Finding LCM and transposing we come to a quadratic equation x square minus 8x minus 1280 equal to 0. As we have learned how to frame a quadratic equation. Now let us learn how to solve it. For solving a quadratic equation, three methods can be used. First one, factorization method. Second one, completing the squares. And third one, quadratic formula. Let us concentrate now for the first method, the factorization method. If ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0, where a not equal to 0 can be reduced, to the product of two linear factors, then the roots of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 can be found by equating each factor to 0. Let us learn the factorization method with the help of an example. You are given an equation 6x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. We have learned the splitting of the middle term and the product should be negative 12 and sum should be negative 1. Splitting the terms we got 6x square plus 3x minus 4x minus 2 equal to 0 and taking 3x common we have 2x plus 1 and in the last two terms taking negative 2 common we have again 2x plus 1. So the common factor 2x plus 1 and then 3x minus 2 which are the two linear factors. Equating them with 0 we have 3x minus 2 equal to 0 
from the we have 3x equal to 2 and x is equal to 2 by 3. And the other linear factor which is 2x plus 1 is also equated to 0 where we get x is equal to negative 1 by 2. Therefore, roots of the quadratic equation are 2 by 3 and negative 1 by 2. As we have seen one example for factorization method, let us move to exercise problems 4.2 page number 76. First question, find the roots of the following quadratic equations by factorization. Question number 1, A and B, the students should do the problems in your notebook. C is explained here. Root 2 x square plus 7x plus 5 root 2 equal to 0. Here, the sum is equal to positive 7 and the product is equal to 10, which we obtained by multiplying the coefficient of x square and the constant term, that is root 2 and 5 root 2. So, we can easily find the factors as 5 and 2. So, splitting the middle term 7x, we can rearrange it as root 2 x square plus 2x plus 5x plus 5 root 2 is equal to 0. Taking root 2 and x as common from the first and the second term, we have root 2 into x and x plus root 2. From the third and the fourth term, we can take 5 as common. So, it becomes 5 into x plus root 2, which is equal to 0. Finally, we can rearrange it as x plus root 2 into root 2 x plus 5, which are the two linear factors. And equating them with 0, we can see x plus root 2 equal to 0. From that, x equal to negative root 2 and root 2 x plus 5 equal to 0. Therefore, x equal to negative 5 by root 2. Therefore, the two solutions or roots of the quadratic equation are negative root 2 and negative 5 by root 2. Question number D. 2x square minus x plus 1 by 8 is equal to 0. It will be more comfortable when we find the LCM and make it into the standard form. So, LCM is equal to 8. And the equation now it becomes 16x square minus 8x plus 1 whole divided by 8 equal to 0. From that we can see 16x square minus 8x plus 1 equal to 0. Now the sum is negative 8 and the product is 16. So the factors are negative 4 and negative 4. Rearranging the equation it becomes 16x square minus 4x minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. Taking 4x as common in the first and the second term, we have 4x into 4x minus 1 and negative 1 from the third and the fourth terms, we have minus 1 into 4x minus 1 equal to 0. Finally, we can write it as 4x minus 1 into 4x minus 1 equal to 0 and therefore x is equal to 1 by 4 and x is equal to 1 by 4. Here we can see the roots are same. Now we move on to the word problems. Any of the three methods can be applied for solving a word problem. As we have learned only factorization method, let us apply factorization method in solving the word problem here. Question number 3. Find two numbers whose sum is 27 and product is 182. Let the numbers be x and y. So as per the data, we can write x plus y equal to 27 and xy is equal to 182. It's given sum that is x plus y is equal to 27, product x into y is equal to 182. Second equation can be written as y equal to 182 by x. And this y is equal to 182 by x is substituted in equation 1. So equation 1 becomes x plus 182 by x equal to 27. It will be always comfortable if we convert the equations into the standard form. So taking the LCM and transposing, we have x square plus 182 is equal to 27x. That is, 
x square minus 27x plus 182 equal to 0. Splitting the middle term negative 27, we obtain the factors as negative 13 and negative 14, which is written as x square minus 13x minus 14x plus 182 equal to 0. Finally, it becomes x minus 13 into x minus 14 equal to 0. Therefore, x equal to 13 or x equal to 14. As both are positive values, if the number x is equal to 13, we can say y is equal to 27 minus 13 which is equal to 14. And if the number x is 14, we can say y equal to 27 minus 14 which is equal to 13. Question number 4. Find two consecutive positive integers such that sum of whose squares is 365. In the question it is given the numbers are consecutive. So let us take the numbers as x and x plus 1. And the data is given as sum of squares is 365. So for the first number x, its square will be x square. And the second number x plus 1, its square will be x plus 1, the whole square. Sum of these two, that is x square plus x plus 1 whole square equal to 365. x plus 1 whole square, we have to apply our a plus b whole square identity and it comes as x square plus 2x plus 1. So the equation becomes x square plus x square plus 2x plus 1 equal to 365. Finally, it becomes 2x square plus 2x minus 364 equal to 0. As all the terms are containing 2 as a common factor, we can divide it by 2. It is not compulsory, but still we can find out the factors easily. It becomes x square plus x minus 182 equal to 0. Factorizing we get the factors as 14 and 30 and we can rearrange it as x plus 14 into x minus 30 equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to negative 14 or x is equal to 30. Here one number is a negative number. But in the question it is given positive integers. So we cannot take our value negative 14. Therefore, x is equal to 13. Therefore, the two consecutive integers are 13 and 14. Now, assignment. Exercise 4.1 in page number 73 and 74. You need to do all the questions in your notebook. In 4.1, the first question you are asked to check whether the following are quadratic equations or not. Some examples are given in the previous slide. Depending on those questions, you can do the other remaining questions. Question number two, you are asked to represent the following situations in the form of quadratic equation. That means you need to frame the quadratic equation. No need of solving it. In exercise 4.2, page number 76, also you need to do all the questions. First one, you need to find the solutions. And the remaining word problems, you have to find the solutions. Thank you.